Hi everyone. Welcome to my ACE session, Assistance with Chemistry Exercises. In this video, I'm going to show you my strategy to draw all the constitutional isomers of C3H7N. We are in Unit 4, which is constitutional isomers, enantiomers, and diastereomers. And uh, I may sound a little bit strange. I don't have my headset. I, I'm in New Jersey right now, and I forgot to pack them. All right. This is also a little bit strange. I also forgot to pack my document camera, so I'm not going to write things by hand. Here I'm going to use the chemical drawing software ChemDraw. Uh, if you have this, there's actually a free version uh, web base called ChemDraw.js. I want to use, I'm, uh, I prefer the ACS, American Chemical Society document, 1996 formatting. And for instance, benzene will look like this in that case. Oh, that's a little bit tiny. Uh, let me get rid of that. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, good. Okay. Draw all the constitutional isomers of C3H7N. And I want to go over a couple of tips first. There are five of them, and I wrote them out beforehand. Oh, there they are. Good. Number one. If no charge is shown in the molecular formula, assume that there are no formal charges. Now, there could be a rare example where you have a plus and a minus in a molecule and they cancel out. But for the vast majority of problems you'll see for constitutional isomers, there will be no formal charges on any of the atoms. Number two, this video assumes you are comfortable with line structures, bonding rules, What's the bonding rule for nitrogen? In the neutral state, nitrogen needs three bonds, one lone pair. And also be comfortable with counting hydrogens because we have to verify that each structure ha only has seven hydrogens. Number three, not draw wedge dash drawings. We want constitutional isomers. These are isomers where the differences are in the connectivity. We do not want to draw wedges and dashes because that uh, implies that we, we might have stereoisomers. I'm not worried about enantiomers and diastereomers. So those of you who are ahead and know about um, the R and S stereoisomers, we're not concerned about that. Those are not different constitutional isomers. Number four, we're going to try to do this systematically. We're going to start with a skeleton and start shifting functional groups. Nitrogen, you could imagine that we have a functional group that's an amino group or an amine, and we could shift that amine or amino group along the carbon chain to get different connectivities, to get different constitutional isomers. Number five, and the last thing, start with a test molecule that is all, that is all, that has all single bonds. And if you have too many hydrogens, let's say we have H11, remember this trick. To remove hydrogens, add a pi bond or a ring for every two hydrogens you want to deduct. So if you have a structure with three carbons and one nitrogen, and it happens to have, it wouldn't, but imagine it has 11 hydrogens, you got to lose four. So you got to either add two pi bonds or two rings or one pi bond or and a ring to lose those four hydrogens. I think this will be apparent when you see my first test molecule. But again, the assumption is you are comfortable with line structures. So one, two, three, and then N right here. OK. So it's red because it doesn't fit the bonding rule. That's the great thing about Kembra. It kind of alerts you when something looks strange. So nitrogen has three bonds and one lone pair. So let me draw that. Wouldn't that nitrogen have three bonds? One to carbon and two to hydrogen. So let us count hydrogens. One to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops. So that's not good. It is a C3H9N. What was the rule? If you need to lose two hydrogens, add a pi bond or a ring. So that is my test compound. That is something that I don't want the grader to see. 
what I want the graders to see first is this. Add a pi bond ring to get rid of two hydrogens. Like that. Let me center this. Inverse grate. If you need to shift molecules because it does it in um, increments. Everyone count with me on this carbon. One, two hydrogens. Three, four, five, six, seven. So that is our first good constitutional isomer. What do I mean by systematically? Take the same skeleton. The skeleton was three carbons in a row and a nitrogen at the end and shift functional group. Let us shift the double bond first. So how about this? Does it fit? Let me get rid of this red box. It doesn't know that this is a molecular formula. Um, okay. okay, so again, this is not good. Um, should I exit or should I erase it? Let me just um, put it off to the side. Mm, let me put it in red. Let me, how about that? So let's put this in red. Hopefully the program doesn't crash. And let me make sure that we know which ones are the correct answers. So we'll make this seven and we'll make this black. Okay, so here are all the valid structures. I'm gonna put them here. We have more than two, obviously. Okay, count. I think we were on this molecule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it works. By shifting the double bond, we do not change the number of hydrogens. So now you can save time on the exam and not have to count every single time. Can we do a nitrogen carbon double bond? Hmm. If we do that, okay, our skeleton was this. If we do that, you notice that nitrogen will have a double bond. So that accounts for two bonds. And it automatically gave me just one hydrogen. Beautiful, right? Because this nitrogen still has three bonds, one, two, and three. And uh, we're not gonna draw the lone pairs, but you know there's a lone pair of nitrogen. It should work. All we did was shift the double bond. Everything is neutral. All the carbons and nitrogen fit the octet rule. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hydrogens. Now we've exhausted the idea of shifting the double bond along this skeleton. So let's go back to the skeleton and shift the NH2 group. Now, obviously, this is fast because I'm using a, a drawing program and I could copy and paste uh, pretty quickly. Um, you'll be drawing this right by hand, but hopefully you'll be drawing line structures. Can you imagine how much time this will take if you drew Lewis structures where you show every letter and every bond? Even if you draw condensed structures, it's gonna be time consuming. Draw line structures, get used to that. And what did I do here? I took the skeleton of three carbons. Let me get this out of the way. What do we do for this molecule here? We had three carbons in a row, and now we're walking the NH2 group from the end to the middle. But remember, if it was all single bonds, I can bet you that this has nine hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we got to add a double bond. And I'll add it here first. Now look at the strategy in the first line. We got other constitutional isomers by shifting the double bond. So we have an opportunity <clears throat> to shift the double bond now between the carbon and nitrogen. So get rid of that. Yeah, I should be doing this for all my constitutional isomer videos. Just use ChemDraw. And it automatically reduced it to one hydrogen because now this nitrogen has three bonds and a lone pair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if I put the double bond on the right, it's the same molecule as this. So we want to always double check whether we're drawing an identical molecule from, uh, from before. Okay. We want to avoid redundancy. Now, what is going on here? Um, oh, you know what? We have the skeleton carbon, 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 nitrogen. We haven't tried yet nitrogen in the middle. So let me take this molecule here and let's start a new line of constitutional isomers where we have nitrogen in the middle. 
and we're going to put it on the second position right here. And we still need three carbons, so we have this. It's a red box because nitrogen is unhappy. It doesn't have the three bonds it's, just, it's expecting. So let me put an H. And with line drawings, you could just draw the H like we did here next door without the bond. Here we put it above. Now, again, I betcha this has nine hydrogens because it's all single bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's add double bonds now starting from the left. And yes, we can have a double bond carbon nitrogen. It looks a little strange actually to me, but let me see if I can. It still looks strange because uh, normally I want the CH2 group here. But it's still a valid line drawing. Hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let us walk that double bond down the chain. The double bond now in this position, if I put it here, is different than the first molecule here on the left, and it has seven hydrogens. I now am starting to realize if you're not pausing the video, you are furiously copying. But why don't we try this? Why don't we just go through the video and then on a blank sheet of paper, see if you could re reproduce my strategy. You don't have to reproduce it exactly the same. You may say, well, let me draw all the molecules that have an NH2 group. Okay, so maybe you wouldn't draw this third. Maybe that will come much, much later. Maybe you'll be drawing these three first. Okay. Um, I like to use the skeleton and shifting stuff, shifting functional groups. So my first three would have been these first three. Okay. Have your own system, so a system that you can remember. Okay. I am shifting double bonds. So let's shift more double bonds. Let's shift it one more to the right. Oh, excellent. It automatically gave me the NH. Now, um, is there any other thing we can do? Well, you know, nitrogen could have three carbons around it. So let's look at that. If I have this, and I put a nitrogen here, oh, sorry, a carbon here, we have nine hydrogens as expected because it's all, it's called saturated. All single bonds saturated with hydrogen. But if I need to go down to here, C3H7N, let me circle that because I'm getting, I don't want to get confused. Um, how do I circle? Okay, that's our target. Um, I should add a double bond. But look what happens when I add a double bond. That nitrogen now is charged. That nitrogen is charged. And Three, four, five, six, seven. And our molecular formula indicates that there is no charge. Now it does fit, I think. Three carbons, one nitrogen, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it doesn't fit. Seven, eight. It doesn't even fit. Okay? So not only would it have a charge, it wouldn't fit. So let me put do this for us. Let me indicate that this is a bad answer. And I'm going to put it in red. Okay. I advocate looking at all the wrong answers. Don't erase it. Understand that it's wrong and try to avoid that mistake. If you erase it, you're bound to make the same mistake again. Now, when I go back and study, I can say, oh, I had a natural tendency to make nitrogen that has four bonds. Now I realize it's wrong, but also now I realize. I'm going to be on the lookout for that and not do it on the actual exam. What this indicates actually to me is that we are done with all the possibilities where there's no rings, there are no rings. But remember one of our rules, if we want to remove two hydrogens, we could either add a pi bond or a ring. We don't have any rings here, but I betcha if I take this test molecule test molecule and make it into a ring, I will go down to H7. So I'm going to use the power of ChemDraw to do this fairly quickly. Again, do this by hand, all right, and do this without 
the answer. Just watching me do this is not going to help you. You got to physically go through the process so you could understand the timing. This could be very time consuming if you don't practice. It's a lot of molecules. Um, so instead of putting a pi bond, okay, which in this case is a double bond, we made a ring. Guess what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Seven hydrogens. Now, we can't make a five membered ring, right? But we can make a four membered ring and we can make a three membered ring. So here are my three membered ring. Here is my three membered ring. And we're going to try to exhaust all the possibilities. So one of the possibilities is three carbons in the ring, the nitrogen is hanging out, NH2. Okay? But what's another possibility? I'm going to pause for drama. I'm going to pause to give you time to figure out what could we do? How can we rearrange the skeleton to get a new constitutional isomer? To put nitrogen here. Will it give me the H automatically? Nope. Uh, let me give the H. H. Okay. okay, great. It's a little bit tight, but you see three carbons and count. Let's start with the nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. If I had put the nitrogen here, right, um, that would be the same molecule as this. If I put the nitrogen here, oh, I can. Get rid of this. And actually, I'm going to put it up here with its cyclopropane cousin. And I'm going to put the nitrogen now in this position. What am I checking for? I'm checking that it's neutral. And then I'm going to check that it has seven hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now let's take a look at what we have. <sighs> um, is there any other possibility? We can't have a two-membered ring. The smallest you could have is three atoms in the ring. I think we're done. Are we done? I think we are done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Alkenes. Actually, they're alkene uh, amines. And then here we have cyclic amines. Cyclic amines. This is why it's kind of helpful to understand your classes of molecules. I told my class that I'm not going to test whether you could draw me a an amine. But now we know that if we have nitrogen, we could draw a bunch of amines. right? This is called a primary amine. This is called a secondary because it's connected to other carbons. It's called a tertiary mean. Let me box everything that is good and let me keep even the red ones so I know, well, A, how to start out. This is your test compound. And B, what are my natural mistakes? It's good to make this mistake. You're testing out different combinations and it's good to know that, oh, yep, yeah, you can't have nitrogen with four bonds because if it becomes positive and it actually doesn't fit. This has eight hydrogens. Are we good with this? Tell you what, if I missed any, um, you know, email me if you're in my class, put a comment if you are, if you stumbled upon this video. But I say they are, there are 12 constitutional isomers. Oh, that's the last thing. You can make this point number six. Don't even try. Okay, good luck.